So we're giving out holiday gifts to each team in town, and we're starting with the Celtics. So, Tomasi, let's start with you. Okay. What, so what, what would be the gift you'd give them? I would actually give them, you know, readers, the glasses, so that you can only see up close. And if you put them on and you try to shoot a three-pointer, you can't even see the hoop. So you're going to have to take some more layups when you're wearing those glasses. I want eyewear that will help them, encourage them to maybe shoot from this area, you know, right by the hoop, and a few less threes. That was a convoluted way of saying it, but you follow, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you do not like the three-point shooting? I don't, yeah, I like a fewer threes is what I would like. So are you not enjoying I don't know how the, to give that as you, a gift. Are you, take it away. Are you not enjoying the, uh, the Q&A after the game, these press conferences? <laughs> I do. I do enjoy any time Gary Washburn asks a question about threes. Because you can just he, see the hatred in Missoula's eyes. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm team, like, I love the three. Don't get me wrong. The Warriors are great. But it's like, just maybe shoot 35 instead of 50. Okay. Andrew? So I was thinking bubble wrap for Chris Stapps Porzingis, but I think we've just been talking about his health too long. So just get a better plan than that. Get a backup plan. His name is Isaiah Stewart. He's out in Detroit. He's Beef a big stew? man. Beef stew? Third big man. And I'm big on Luke Cornett. I think he's been fine. He started shooting like he did as a rookie. They'd be cooking with gas. He's not. That's fine. Get beef stew, switch between the four and the five, some depth. It's going to happen. Chris Stapps is going to get hurt again, but bring in the big guy. Okay. I, I, I would wish them health all the way around. <laughs> Because obviously this, but here's the thing, like they, the way they played Wednesday, a little shorthanded, I thought it was really impressive. So getting through the regular season, they're totally fine in those situations. You get to the postseason, you obviously need everyone healthy. And I think Porzingis has been huge in that regard. Uh, the one thing, and this is especially, I think, lately where, where I'm coming, I, I want them, I would give them the gift of that, that late game swagger and composure. Because I feel like they've sort of become a little hesitant in these late game moments where early in the season you would feel teams kind of come back on them and the Celtics impose their will. And I know that everyone wants to point it out and say, yeah, but th those teams weren't the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors are different. I, the Golden State Warriors are different from what the Golden State Warriors used to be. I think that, that that's a game the Celtics need to close out. They just – that, that late game composure feels like it wasn't even what it was going back to October, early November. The problem is nobody can give them that. They got to they gotta find it. You know, they got to steal it. They got to take it, whatever. It, it, it can't come externally, and that's still the big worry. You watch that Golden State game and you say, I don't care what they do the rest of this trip. We know that that's still in there. This is what has haunted them in the postseason the last couple of years. It's going to be in the back of all of our minds come April, May, and hopefully June. How do we so, – go ahead. I was going to say, Santa flies around the world with reindeer that fly with him and delivers – gifts to millions of children. Yeah. I'm not putting it past Santa to give them exactly what you're talking for. Composure and swagger. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on the list. Like, you Mail it express it. to the North Pole. It. Let's make it happen. It doesn't have to be That's tangible. That's why Santa doesn't give every kid a Ferrari. It's like you got to earn it, you know? Okay. Well, I think they can earn the composure <laughs> and, and everything Probably else. Not a good idea to give any kid a Ferrari. <laughs> Are you worried at all about their killer instinct, though? Hugely. Hugely. Like, you know, basically what turned us was – they had that whole weird contrived like 23 point thing against the Bulls, which was super fun to watch. But we talked about that like it was an example of, look, they needed to do it and they did. And then they put the upstart magic in their place. That was great. But we're, nobody's talking about the magic like they're going to win a title. And so those are the two examples that we have of, see, they're different. They're figuring it out. No, we, Indiana, they didn't do it when there was some intensity and physicality to that game. Golden State, they didn't do it. So I'm back to being a doubting Tomasi on that one. I just I would like to see them consistently pull these games out, and they really they haven't done it during the Jays' tenure for the most part, except early on. What what would be a good finish to the road trip? Because obviously you got the Clippers on Saturday, and then Monday you got the Lakers, and the Clippers have actually been pretty good lately. The the James Harden experiment Best team worked out for them. Yeah, I I get for now for now. They're the Clippers, and it, it is James Harden, and, and things will, I, I believe, fall apart at some point. But what would be a good finish of the road trip with these two games? I want to see the Jays go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, not from an overall standpoint or scoring, but defensively. Like Kawhi in the last couple of weeks, if you've watched any of the Clippers, looks like vintage Kawhi. And it's as much a tenacity thing as him just reaching out and pulling the ball whenever he wants from you. So you're on the road. This used to be their test when they first got together out in Los Angeles, and they'd obviously play twice a year. But match that, because you're going to be running into these, you know, predatory wings in the playoffs, maybe even in the finals, maybe not the Clippers, and they need to be there because you know what you're getting from Drew Holiday. You know what you're getting from Derek White. 
And so if the Jays bring it defensively, like this is going to be a big test for them, and I think just from an energy and alpha standpoint. And Tatum has always played well, I feel like, against Kawhi. He has answered the bell there. Now, Leonard's been hurt a lot, so we haven't seen him full strength, but I feel like this is a matchup that Tatum circles. We'll see if he plays, first of all, right. uh, and, you know, how healthy he is. But I like the idea of him responding there. And meanwhile, the Lakers have been pretty bad since they uh, raised the banner for the in-season tournament. But it's still Christmas Day, and LeBron knows that it's Christmas Day and everyone's watching, so I'd expect the Lakers' best on Monday. All right, let's uh, switch over to the Patriots now, taking a list of what the fans might want for the Patriots this year. It could be a head coach. It could be a number one pick, a, a franchise quarterback, a number one receiver, a number two receiver maybe, a third down back, a tight end, a quick decision from Kraft, uh, a winning season, a playoff appearance. That was that's page one. Let's go to page two. I'm just kidding. We're only we only yeah, do I was one like, what page. What is the timeline on this I, list? I don't know, man. We're right, we're out of time. It's gonna do it for us. Um, if you're giving a gift to the Patriots, Andrew, I'll start with you. What are you giving them? What's the, at the top of the list? The most immediate thing is the number one overall pick, and that is obviously means them losing out, a little bit of luck, and a win or two from Carolina. But I think that's the thing you can go out and get and have it and all of the leverage is in there whether you want to trade out whether you want to have your pick of the quarterback which is going to be the biggest piece after the head coach and GM because we can say hey get a new head coach you don't know if that coach is going to be successful for another year or two at least by the end of the season you have the number one overall pick you have options you have assets you have a pathway forward with any of the passers we're showing now who one of them should be a star so who what do you do with the number one pick I mean, i got to watch more tape on Caleb Williams and Drake May and Jaden Daniels. But I, I think, again, you know, we so you're, you're But you're taking a quarterback. Yes, that yeah, no question about it. I'm taking a quarterback. But at least if they go in and they watch all that tape and go, you know, a lot of these guys take more sacks than they should or they find some sort of mold to pick at, then you can, then you can move back. I'll probably argue against it until I watch more tape. I just say get the pick and have all your options open. Yeah, and I, I know people are kicking around the idea of trading out of that spot. I just take the guy. Take, take one of the quarterbacks. They're, they're almost, it's almost like if, you, if you're at number two and you think it's a two-quarterback race, then they you take the decision right out of your hands and you just go with whoever's left there. But, John Tomasi, what gift are you giving to the Patriots? I would have said the same thing, so I'm going to say a broom. Like, Robert Kraft, please clean house. There can't be half measures. We've seen too many of the local teams. I'm thinking of the Red Sox. They make changes, and it's half measures. It's like, no, you need a clean start. And right now you can do it because – your talent level stinks. Your team is nowhere close to competing. You don't have a quarterback. If ever there is a moment where you can start over, it is right now, so do it. And where you start over, to me, is at the top. You need to, you need to get the right general manager, the right guy in charge of player personnel, and that's where it starts. And it kind of goes back to the conversation we had in the first segment where you need everyone on the same page. So if you're, if you're going to bring Gerard Mayo back, you got to make sure that he can work in concert with this general manager and that they're also in concert with what they want to do with the draft pick, who they want to be their quarterback moving forward. That to me, I, I would give them the gift and, and Robert Kraft the confidence to go out there and identify who that person is and make sure that they get that right. And you even just go to recent, I mean, not so recent Patriots history 30 years ago. How did that rebuild start? Like, yes, Bill Parcells came in, then Kraft took over with the ownership. Drew Bledsoe, became the number one overall pick. And Drew Bledsoe, certainly not among the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but you got to a Super Bowl a few years later because then you made the right decision with the head coach and GM and got the pieces in place around him. But a big part of that run and that era, upon which Belichick then rebuilt the Patriots, was having a quarterback in place you felt good about and you build the rest of the roster around. And just real quick, right before that, they had the number one pick. They traded it to Dallas. It was a disaster. They yeah. got nothing. They got, you know, Pat Harlow was like, and so you know you have that pick. You have the shot at the franchise quarterback. You have to take it. All right, let's uh, switch gears over to the Red Sox now, uh, who we talked about a little earlier. Uh, taking a look at who the team has actually added this offseason. You got pitcher Cooper Criswell and outfielder Tyler O'Neill. What else? Don't forget Isaiah Championship. Campbell. They got him, too. Okay, so what else could you possibly need then? What else could you possibly want? <laughs> Andrew, I'll let you go first on this one since we know Tomas is going to get very fired up. I think we're going to have overlapping answers. Just guts. You know, go out there. Back up what you said. No one forced Tom Werner to say, we're going full throttle here. I the, the, the needs are, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, well, well done by you. You're very but intimidating the, the point individual. Is, <laughs> the the <cornered> needs him. <laughs> are obvious. The talent and the arms are available. Go sign them. Even if your plan A is at the window, that doesn't mean you can't go execute plan B. And if you surprise midway through the season, make some moves at the deadline. We're not asking them to be the Dodgers right now with all of their talent. But compete. Give yourself a chance. Give your fans a reason to go into the park and buy a seat. Right now, we have fewer than we did a year ago. 
Yeah, so I talked to David Ortiz a couple of weeks ago, and he said what he likes about Craig Breslow, the player, was that he had pelotas, a Spanish word. You mm. can look it up to do the translation. I would like to see more of that pelotas in the decision making that's happening right now because there is still time to be aggressive. The trade market, other than Tyler Glasnow, not a lot has happened there. There are starters who are going to be moved. There are still big name free agents, maybe not to the level of Aaron Nola, who resigned with the Phillies, or obviously Yamamoto, but there are still guys out there. So you said guts. Go be gutsy and do something because there are always reasons to say no. The Red Sox are the best team in the league the last five years of being like, no, we can't do that. One more year and then he's a free agent. So we can't trade for Corbin Burns, even though he's a Cy Young winner. Everyone now has decided that's a terrible move. Well, he says he won't sign. You're the bleeping Red Sox. Trade for him if you think he's good and si extend him. You can make him an offer he can't refuse. They don't, they're not in that business anymore, Giles. They're in the business of no. They need to get to yes. Okay, well, that's why you guys are all talking about the fortitude. Have the fortitude to make a trade and show that you're willing to make a trade. You're willing to even lose a trade if you have to, but to try something. Uh, that would be my gift. By the way, we, if, if I was given a, a gift to the Boston Bruins, it would be get out of the first round because I'm sick of everyone talking about how they can't get out of the first round. So it's just like that's it there and then. Uh, that sounds more like a gift to you, but I get it. Uh, well, yeah, would have been a big gift last year too with some of those future bets.